The narrative unfolds with Emma, nine years old, is shown watching a cat drown in a fountain via the window of her room. With no regret for the drowning cat, she shuts the curtains and continues with her morning routine. Emma resides with her father, David, who is a widower. She is a polite child and an outstanding student. She doesn't appear to have any human feelings, though. Emma tells him her goal to receive a school citizenship award that day at breakfast. Emma's aunt, Angela, enters as they are conversing. She tells David about Emma's new babysitter that she has located. It comes out that there was a, unfortunate accident, involving Emma's prior babysitter. Emma gestures to the dead cat in the fountain while they are speaking. When David takes the cat out of the water, Emma appears emotionless about its passing. The kids are studying that day at school when they are startled by a wasp. As other student cower in fright, Emma catches the wasp in a cup, and lets it fly out the window. Next, David is interviewing Chloe, the new babysitter, in the interim. She is hired because he appreciates her portfolio of work. David seemed to be appealing to Chloe. At school, Katie, Emma's classmate, is playing when she runs into Emma, who assists her in getting up. Their teacher observes what happens. Emma appears to be attempting to be empathetic in order to receive the citizenship award. Emma practices smiling in front of the mirror that evening. The day of the awards is the next day. David dresses up Emma and drives her to school. When the instructor reveals that Milo has earned the citizenship award, Emma starts disparaging Milo. She tells David that she should have won and that Milo didn't deserve it. When David gives her a disapproving look, she apologizes. Later on, when no one is around, Emma takes Milo to show him a nearby cliff. Emma approaches Milo as he recommends going back, however the screen goes black. Later, when Milo's parent asks Emma where he is, she lies and claims she hasn't seen Milo since the bonfire. Two females suddenly appear out of nowhere, pleading for assistance. When they see that Milo has plunged down the cliff and perished in the sea, all of the parents panic. His father attempts to revive Milo, but he has passed away. Emma totally overlooks the news that her buddy passed away. Later, Chloe, the new babysitter, stops by the house. David isn't home that evening. Emma catches Chloe in David's room taking some of David's meds. Later, while watching a movie together, Emma questions her about the drugs. If Chloe complies with her requests, she swears she won't tell David. Then Emma gives her the instruction to fetch an ice cream. Chloe calls the small girl a bitch, but does as she says. Milo's memorial is the next day. Emma is the only one not sobbing after the ceremony. After speaking with Milo's parents, David learns that the medal is missing. They believe it to have sank in the sea. Emma starts crying at that very moment. She seems to be feigning sadness in order to appease Milo's parents. Upon returning home, David worries about Emma's actions. That day, when he folds Emma's clothing, we discover that Milo's medal is concealed beneath Emma's mattress. David sees many photos of Emma scowling at Milo when going through the award day photos. He believes Emma had something to do with Milo's passing. David is visited later that day by Emma's teacher, Mrs. Ellis, and a police officer to discuss Milo's passing. Mrs. Ellis asserts that prior to Milo's death, Two witnesses allegedly saw Emma with him in the cliff. Emma stands by the door and listens in on their talk. In an attempt to interrupt the grown-ups, she pretends to harm herself by falling on a vase. Emma is harmed, Mrs. Ellis and the police had to leave. When her father asks while tending to her injuries, Emma denies being with Milo at the cliff. Emma becomes enraged and exclaims that Mrs. Ellis despises her when he discloses that Mrs. Ellis said she was. Chloe visits David's side house where he works the next day, and when she asks to take a cigarette, David tells her that there are too many combustible substances in the area and that she is not allowed to smoke. Chloe then brings Emma outside to play with her scooter. While they are at it, the two spot Mrs. Ellis's automobile in front of Milo's home. She is conversing with Milo's mom. They are assembling evidence against Emma. Chloe claims, she is aware that Milo was harmed by Emma. The little child, nevertheless, presents herself as ignorant of Chloe's topic of conversation. They carry on the chat until they get home. Emma is told by Chloe that she would be placed in an electric chair if they discover what happened to Milo. Emma is afraid, but she won't acknowledge doing anything about it. Later that day, as Chloe is searching the home for Emma, we discover that the wasp nest that had been in the outhouse's ceiling has vanished. Then, we witness Mrs. Ellis leaving Milo's house in her car. A wasp distracts her as she's driving, almost resulting in an accident. Then we see a whole nest in the back seat. In an attempt to murder her instructor, Emma placed the nest inside the automobile. When Chloe gets home, she discovers Milo's medal under Emma's mattress. 
To ensure that Emma is discovered, she hangs it from a light on David's dresser. Emma visits David in his restroom, where she notices the medal. David discovers her hiding it behind her when she removes it from the bulb, he confronts her about the situation. Emma fabricates a tale and pretends to say that Milo gave her the medal when they were playing. In an attempt to distract himself from this, David drives and witnesses a vehicle wreck on the side of the road. In another call, he urges Angela to get Emma a therapist. David starts to have dreams involving Milo and Emma. Emma confronts Chloe about placing the medal there the next day. She is enraged. Emma is asked to accompany David as he walks downstairs at that moment. To give his mother the medal back, he drives her to Milo's house. Though bewildered, she is appreciative that she returned it. Then she tells them of Mrs. Ellis's passing. Wasps had caused her to get into an automobile accident. David is astonished. Emma starts crying and says her favorite teacher was Mrs. Ellis. On the walk home, though, Emma speaks to Chloe about making cookies and appears to have forgotten about Mrs. Ellis's passing. David finds Emma's actions unsettling. Later, when David is using the outhouse, he discovers that the wasp's nest has vanished. He believes Mrs. Ellis's death was caused by his daughter. Emma's first meeting with Dr. March, her therapist, is the following day. She and Emma talk for a while. Following the session, the physician informs David that Emma is just like any other child, she even managed to trick a psychiatrist. On their return home, David finds Chloe lounging in her sports bra and stares. He invites her to check on Emma. Chloe informs Emma that David was staring at her sexily moments ago while they spoke. She continues by saying she could be her future stepmother. In a fit of rage, Emma yells at her to keep away from her dad. Emma queries David that evening about his feelings for Chloe. David is perplexed. She also discloses Chloe's desire to be her stepmother. But David doesn't really explain why he's leaving, he's running late for their date. Later, when Chloe is watching TV, she hears something. She searches everywhere for Emma, but to no avail. She notices a shadow in the window as she peers out at the exterior of the home. She leaves the house to find her. The door shuts behind her as she enters the outhouse. As she attempts to unlock it, it seems to be locked from the outside. At that moment, a fire breaks out on the floor. Through the glass, Chloe sees Emma observing her. When she attempts to hit her, the fire indulges her and ultimately kills her. When David returns home, paramedics and firefighters greet him and inform him of Chloe's passing. After being brought to an official's house, Emma is finally given a hug by him. In the evening, David visits Emma's room. With affection, he asks her whether she wounded Milo as he sits down in front of her. He promises her that he would do whatever he can to assist her, but she needs to tell him the truth. At last, Emma acknowledges that she shoved Milo down the cliff. Claiming he was going to report her for stealing his medal, she offers an apology. She then remarks nonchalantly that she won't do it once more. David is appalled. Then he inquires about Mrs. Levia, Emma's former nanny. She says that Mrs. Levia grabbed her hand, so she shoved her down the steps. Then, according to her, Livia ought to have exercised greater caution. As Emma speaks, her aggressiveness increases. And when finally asked about Chloe, she rants at David and accuses Chloe of wanting to be her stepmother. David worries because he finds it hard to comprehend that his young daughter could do such a terrible deed. The town sheriff gives David a call early the next morning stating that he would want to see Emma. But David offers up her illness as an explanation. Then he drives her to their remote lake cottage. They are greeted by their housekeeper. Later that day, David receives another call from the sheriff, this time informing him that someone intentionally started the fire, but they are unsure of who. He worries that his daughter could be discovered. David is at the home with a gun. Every now and again, he glances at it, considering how he can utilize it to address the issue. The next day, Emma enters David's room while he's sleeping and gives him a kiss. In an attempt to murder her father, she shuts all the windows and lights all the gas burners. Emma then makes her way outside and remains beside the lake. David wakes up at that exact moment and notices the gas flooding the home. He flips off the burners and opens the windows hastily. He discovers that Emma had attempted to murder him when he sees her outdoors by the lake. Approaching her, he inquires as to why she took that action. Emma responds that if something were to happen to him, she gets to move in with her Aunt Angela, who does like her and doesn't find her weird. David carefully leads her inside the home while holding her hand. David is then seen smashing his pills. He gives Emma a hot chocolate cup later on. After they both sip their hot chocolate, David puts her to bed. He phones Angela when he gets back to his room and tells her everything about Emma's transgressions, but she doesn't believe him. After apologizing to Angela, he informs her incoherently that he is out of alternatives. It comes out that David had injected chemicals into Emma's hot chocolate in an attempt to make her overdose and prevent her from killing more people. However, 
he keeps this from Angela. Emma comes into his room after he goes to sleep that night. She aims a pistol she has in her hand at him. She attempts to shoot, but misses, causing the bullet to land on David's pillow. When he awakens, he asks her how she is still alive. Emma responds that she had substituted David's hot chocolate for her own. As he soon realizes that she'll murder him, David jumps to get the gun out of her grasp. Emma grabs his phone and dials 911 right away. She then rushes away to the restroom while David pursues her with the aim to kill her. Emma reports that her father is attempting to murder her to the 911 operator. David raises his rifle at Emma after breaking through the bathroom door. At that moment, the housekeeper with his weapon arrives from behind him. As David aims at Emma, the housekeeper shoots him from the back. Emma sees her father collapse to the ground and pass away. The cops also show up, and the housekeeper explains the entire event that led to that moment. The following morning, Angela shows up at the site. Emma is informed that her father was most likely ill. Emma gives Angela a hug, grinning and sporting a chilly, predatory expression as the movie ends. If you enjoy this video please hit the like button and turn on notifications so you don't miss more videos like this.